Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, we have studied the fundamental aspect of Fourier's law of conduction. It tells us that the heat transfer by conduction is directly proportional to temperature gradient. And finally, we obtained a mathematical equation for that law in the form like this. Heat transfer by conduction heat transfer is equal to minus Ka dt by dx. In this case, this K is the thermal conductivity of the material of the wall, A is the cross-sectional area for heat transfer and dt by dx is the temperature gradient. Now the question comes that this is in a differential form. So how to apply this equation to particular geometries, particular cases, particular applications? For example, the plain wall case can be the wall of the household. Simply it behaves like a plain wall which is undergoing heat transfer. Outside surface of the wall is exposed to the direct sunlight. So ultimately heat can be conducted from outside surface which is now at a higher temperature towards the internal surface of the wall inside the house which is at a lower temperature. In the same way at night when sun sets down at night outer environment is slightly cold. So outer surface of the house is also slightly cold while internal surface is still at a slightly higher temperature. So heat conducts from inside of the house towards the outside. So it is necessary to understand the mathematical relationship of this physical phenomenon. That's what we are going to do. So we are going to apply the Fourier's law for this particular case of plain wall because it is a very important application, particularly in the design of refrigerators, in the design of cold storages, even in the design of solar collectors or water heaters. So to understand this application, we are going to consider a plane wall. We will simplify the analysis by considering one dimensional heat transfer, which means heat transfer is happening only perpendicular to the cross sectional area. So this is the plane wall that we are thinking about. The material of the plane wall is having thermal conductivity K and as we know its unit will be watt per meter Kelvin or its unit will be watt per meter degree Celsius. We already have developed an understanding that both of these units are equivalent. There is no difference in them. Then let us consider that L is the thickness of this wall. Left hand side of the wall is at a temperature T1 while right hand side of the wall is at a temperature T2. I have purposely written T1 on the upper side and T2 on the lower side to indicate that let us say T1 is a higher temperature, T2 is a lower temperature to which wall is subjected and because of that there will be a temperature gradient inside the wall and when we understand it mathematically such kind of temperature gradient will be responsible for heat transfer from outer surface of the wall towards the inner surface or from higher temperature towards the lower temperature. Okay. So now how do we convert it into some useful formula that can be applied to any piece? We already have our basic equation, it is not going to change. Okay, one physical understanding we need to develop and convert into mathematics is that for a case of plane wall, the cross-sectional area remains constant. So that's the first physics understanding that we are developing. Area for a plane wall, let us say, area for a plane wall is always constant. It does not change. How can we say that? For example, for this same plane wall, if we take a section in the middle of it, still we will see that the cross section is same. The cross section will be perpendicular to the plane of this paper. So it will be same. It is not going to change at any point along the thickness of the wall. That's why we call that area of the plane wall is constant. So in this equation, this will be a constant parameter. Thermal conductivity of the material will be a constant parameter. So only variable quantity will be dt by dx. So now we can proceed towards converting this differential equation into some analytical form. So for that purpose, we will need to integrate that equation. So we will now first separate the terms, heat transfer by conduction. We will take this dx on the other side of the equality sign. So Q conduction into dx is equal to minus K A dt. 
Now, as we have seen, this dx is a variable quantity. This dx is nothing but change in location, change in thickness. So, at this point, where there is beginning of our coordinate system, x is exactly equal to 0 and x is progressing in this direction. So, at x is equal to 0, there is no thickness and after some distance, there is this thickness of L. So, on the basis of this physical understanding, we can apply the limits of integration. So, when we will integrate it for the entire wall, x changes from 0 to L and that's why 0 is the lower limit of integration, L is the higher limit of integration. On the other hand, at x is equal to 0, how much is the temperature? It is T1. So, for x is equal to 0, corresponding to that, this is the limit of integration. At x is equal to L, the temperature is T2. Now, the question will come that in the beginning, I said T1 is higher, T2 is lower. That, but then, higher temperature is the lower limit of integration and lower temperature is the higher limit of integration. Their values do not matter at this point. We are concerned about the physical understanding of the location. At that particular location, that will be the temperature and that's why it will be the limit of integration. At x is equal to 0, temperature is T1. At x is equal to L, temperature is T2. This is how we set the limits of integration. Now, we will perform the integration. As we know, integration of dx, this integration of dx will be simply x and then we will substitute the limit of limits of integration as well and like I said k and k are constant quantities that's why they will not undergo any integration and then this integration of dt will be t only within the limits t1 to t2 okay now we will substitute the limits of integration so what we get here is l minus 0 so only l and in this case, we get minus Ka into the bracket T2 minus T1. Okay. Now, we will absorb this negative sign inside the bracket. So, ultimately, we can get heat transfer by conduction in case of flame wall as Ka after absorbing the negative sign as T1 minus T2 upon L. This is the analytical equation which we are looking at when we are discussing about heat transfer in a plane wall. See the advantage of using proper Fourier's law is that even though T2 was put on the higher limit of integration, still it came out as a proper, it came out in the term of proper temperature difference as higher temperature minus lower temperature. So always we consider it in the simplest form as Ka delta t upon l from physical understanding we can directly write down this delta t there is nothing to worry about higher temperature and lower temperature simply delta t will be sufficient thank you